Hi, my name is Dominic Daddy, and today I'm going to be showing you what it's like to make a game in glue, which is included in Flat Red Ball's development kit. We'll be making Pong, so let's get started. First, we'll need to make a new project. This is going to download updated libraries and create the Visual Studio solution for Pong and include the Flat Red Ball DLL. Now we're ready to create our screens. Every game will have at least one screen, which is where we'll add all the visual elements and any game logic. We'll call this one main screen. Now that we have our screen up, let's make top and bottom walls. We can't see anything quite yet, so let's load view, glue view. We get a sense of what we're creating here. Slide this over to the side a little bit. And so these represent the top and bottom walls that we're going to bounce the, wall, the ball off of. So what we're going to need to do is set the Y value for one of these to be maybe a 300 for the bottom and 300 for the top, since the screen is 800 by 600 right now. And we'll name this one, since it's on the bottom, we'll name this one bottom wall. And this one's going to be top wall. I'm going to adjust the width to cover the screen. Both of these will have 800. Now what we'll do is we'll make the ball. We'll add a new entity. The ball is going to be an entity because it has some values like speed and logic for increasing its velocity. So now I need to give the ball a variable and create a new variable. It's going to be a float. And we'll call it starting speed. And we will give that a default of 150. And then what we're going to do is drag the ball onto the main screen. So now there's actually an instance of the ball on the screen so that we can see it. When we click screen, I won't see anything yet because I have to add an object. We'll add a circle to it. And now you can see there's a visual element. Blue view shows you exactly what you're adding to each screen as you do it. So entities are great when we need to have multiple copies. So let's make a paddle of entity. And as any pond paddle would, it's going to have a rectangle to represent the actual paddle. And this is going to be 16 by 1.8. And so now the paddle needs a, a speed variable as well, so I'm going to create a new float here. And we'll call this one movement speed. And what we're going to do is drag two paddle instances onto the main screen. So the first paddle instance will set on the left, and we will call it Player One Paddle. And the second paddle instance we will call Player Two Paddle, and it's going to be on the right. Now we need to add two text objects directly to the screen that will represent the score. This is going to be at the top left. And that one will be at the top right. And then what we can do is call, we'll call these, um, let's call this one player one score and player two score. And now what I'm going to do, you see, is it's called tunneling. We'll get into that in some other tutorials, but for now I'm just going to go with it. We're going to tunnel into this text box with display text variable. And 
and cast that as an integer. So it gets a nice default value of zero. You can see a change up there. And then similarly, we'll tunnel the player two score with the value type of integer. And that gives me two variables here that I can use as integers in my game and set these text values here. It's really nice. Makes it really super easy. And I did something wrong here. Reverse these. And now that we have everything set up, let's jump into Visual Studio. Super easy with a project link. And it opens up your solution directly in Visual Studio. So first things first, let's run the game. See if it all works. You should see everything that we saw in Glue View exactly matching. There we go. We can go ahead and close that because it's not doing anything. The button is not doing anything. We haven't programmed anything yet. So the first thing we need to do is in the screens, in main screen, if you open up the file, you see custom initialize. Now this, this code runs immediately when the screen is being initialized. So what we need to do is start the ball moving. I'll create a function. You see that the ball chose somewhere to go randomly. All right. But it just goes through the wall or through the panel. So we need to make the ball entity implement I collidable. Let's do that in blue. So now the ball entity can be expressed as a collidable entity. So in the custom activity, let's call collision activity. Slide against the paddles. And look at that, we need to make paddles implement I collidable as well. So come in here and do the same thing. We need to give it a mass and some electricity, and then everything should work fine now. What we should see now is a ball that bounces off two paddles. Boom. And so that's interesting, but not quite pong yet. What we need to do is add movement on the paddle. <clears throat> so now that the paddles are I collidable, uh, we want collision to be accurate collision. So it's against the corners and the top and bottom. So Let's go to glue again. We're going to tunnel the axis, left, axis aligned rectangles reposition directions property. We'll tunnel that. Oops. So the default for this one, well, the default for the main entity is not going to be set. For player one paddle, we can set a separate default for right player two paddle. Do do that. So now let's run the game. I should see things looking pretty much like pond so far. Let's close this. So now we'll want to add some movement to the paddles. And we can do this by adding new variables to the paddle. One is move up key. Let's do that. New variable. Use it to create in blue. And so for the move up key, we need to use this Microsoft DexNA framework input keys type. And we'll call this move up key. And we'll do the same thing for move down key, of course.
And for the instance, again, variables at the instance level can be set with default variables, or default values, I'm sorry. So here, move up key we will set to, on the player one paddle will be W key, and down will be S. And then for the player two paddle, we'll use the up and down keys. So that's great, but the paddle actually needs some code now to be able to move, because you'll notice if you run a game, and you can hit up and down all day, nothing happens, because we didn't program them in yet. So the paddle entity has a custom activity function as well, and so what we'll do here is check for the move up and move down keys and move the paddles appropriately. So now we have the code put in. So now if we run the game, well, movement's not quite working, so let's go back to blue. I think I forgot to set the default movement speed. Now if we run the game, we should have titles that move. And now it's looking a lot more like Pong, but the ball's just going to keep going there, and we don't have any scoring yet. So let's do it. To do this, we'll create two rectangles in the game screen to represent the goals. So we'll come back to the game screen here. We'll add two more axis align rectangles. We'll call this one right goal. We'll call this one left goal. So again, we can load blue view here. We can check these out. And the right goal, we're going to set the x value to be 400. And it needs to be high enough to cover the entire back wall. So we're going to set that to 600. And same thing here, just negative 400. Now you can see where the walls are here. Or, I'm sorry, the goals. And what we'll need to do is in the screen, we need to add collision to them. And so we'll do that in the main screen's activity again. So if the ball collides against the right goal, that means player one score goes up. Also, if it collides against the left wall, there are two scores goes up. So if we run the game here, the ball happily bounces back and forth, and if we move out of the way, we're going to see a bug here. So what we need to do is, the instant the ball collides, we need to reset the ball's position. So, let's quick call start ball moving, and then we'll adjust that function. To actually change the ball's position. Right back to the center. And so there you have it. But you'll notice that the ball just goes right down the center, so we're going to have to fix that. So right here in the collision activity, it's a very simplistic call. It's not, it's, it's colliding against the it's colliding the ball against the paddle, but it's not actually doing anything to change the y velocity of the ball. So what we need to do is a quick test here. If this is true, we'll still call the activity, meaning it'll still cause the ball to bounce, but we can also do some things to change the ball's y velocity. So now, depending on where the ball is in relation to the center of the paddle, we're going to adjust the y velocity. Now we can see we have a bug where it's not bouncing off the top wall. So that's always good to do. Now we just need to collide against the top and the bottom walls here.
And now it's bouncing off the top wall. And we have Squirty. So there's Pong. <laughs>